<laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for coming to the park. <laughs> it's beautiful, eh? Right? Yeah. yeah. That's my life. It's a bit of a non stop pop up. <laughs> <laughs> but this is Polly Mac, who's a chef. You trained as a French? Yeah, I trained as a pastry chef uh, many, many years ago, and that's how they lived there. That's how I got into Australia. And luckily, oh. for, and luckily for Australia, they were looking for pastry chefs at the time. I'm, I'm from the dirty, dark north of England, so but, but via via 20 other countries. So I left when I was 19, and uh, with my girlfriend, who's now my wife. So we've been together for nearly 30 years. Just, yeah, met as kids and um, travelled the world, you know. Wow. And you know, travelled the world for free as yeah. well. Well, because we could cook. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. So people would, so pe <laughs> um, people would give us an airline ticket. There you go. And that was it. So we, we fell in love with travelling and we thought we'd done everywhere. And then I think we opened a restaurant back in England and someone had said to me, you should go to Australia. And I was like, yeah, hey, okay. <laughs> Why not? And then the visa came and we were in, and that's it. Wow. And we never looked back, so 16 years here now. Wow. So where was your first job in Australia? What was your first? Oh, Lord. Um, oh, I worked for Jim Henson. So, the, the Muppet guy. No. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, both of us actually, we worked on a, um, a TV. She's a chef as well. She is, yes. That's she tries so not to cook now because I do. <laughs> she's, not gonna see, she's not going to see this. Right? <laughs> no, it's just on Facebook. We'll ban her. She, <laughs> she, I don't think she uses it. Um, so, we, we managed to land this job uh, on a TV show called Farscape, which bombed terribly. But it was um, Jim Henson's production company, and it was based in Homebush, and we lived in a camper van. So we would drive the camper van from Woolloomooloo to Homebush every day <laughs> at, at five in the morning, um, wow. and we worked on this terrific production, 600 people, and it was nuts. So that, I think that was my first introduction to food. So you were the food, you were cooking. I was r running the food truck. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. So like the real odd thing, isn't it? Like yeah. coming here camping. Right. Your skills. Yeah. So look, but the thing is, we found about Australia that it was just so very accepting. Yeah. If if you're if you're able to work and you're willing to just go that little bit further, then you were so rewarded. Whereas I felt that where we were in England, I had a lovely job. I worked in this beautiful, stately home, and we were doing well. But that's all it was ever going to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I look back and think we probably made the right call. That's so cool to have you on Shine Sandra Girls. I just uh, see everything is just shining. So where are we actually? Where's the park like? Oh, we're in Terrigal. We're in Terrigal Rotary Park. Yeah. Um, we right accident. Next to the water. Yeah, right, right on the water. Hello. Look, 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 look. Yeah, you're talking. Surrounded. You know, you go. We're surrounded by duck. animals. We've got all sorts of possums and baby. We've got three families of baby ducks at the moment. <laughs> um, all sorts of crazy stuff happens in the park, but it's, it's we, we spoke a little bit earlier, it's, it's about one of those things, one of those places that's hidden in plain sight. So for years I drove past and never really thought of anything, and we were in the park, and I had two kids, and I was probably hungover, and I was looking for coffee, and I'm thinking, I've unloaded the kids, I forgot the water, and I've left the lunch in, fridge, in the fridge, so I'm like, what am I going to do? Where am I going to go for a coffee? Yeah. And the, the beautiful little guy uh, in the shop had gone. I'm not buying one from the 7-Eleven, I refuse. Sorry, yeah. um, And the closest place is too far. And I'm thinking, what would be awesome? That little window would make it perfect for me. And, I, was like, and I, I just can't stop. Unfortunately, I've got this thing that I kind of create stuff to do. And now I'm just so incredibly busy. But this is one of those opportunities that I just couldn't let go. Yeah. So my wife had gone back to full-time work after seven years of having kids, yeah. and it was all—it was going to be all about her. Yeah. This is your chance. You go yeah, and have a full-time job. Wow. You know, you, it, and it was. And she said to me, "I remember the look on her face." She said, "Why? <laughs> Why do you need to do this? I was, you know, we've got a successful consultancy. I could work from home and look after the kids. I was like, well, because somebody else will do it, and they'll make it. They won't. It won't be me. So." And you just had this brilliant idea, yeah. something that I don't know if it was brilliant, it was an idea. You turned it into something brilliant, let's put it yeah. that way. Yeah. Look, I guess the idea of Parklife is 
I, I had the kids, and I, what I wanted is something that I could trust, yeah. something that was kid friendly, yeah. something that had my wife's uh, dairy free, and you know we we kind of put in and out of veganism. Yeah. I opened a couple of vegan places last year, yeah. and really enjoyed the way that it made me feel. Anyway. Those restaurants that kind of go, oh, we're a vegetarian restaurant, oh, we're a... I just didn't want any of that. I wanted it to be just accessible. No label. No label, no, but I wanted your kids place. to be able to have a cookie and not yeah. like a massive, smarty yeah. cookie that's going to make them crazy. Yeah, yeah. Because you had kids, you knew what it and makes. I, I know what the repercussions are. Into, yeah. So you, they'll see 25 jars lined up, they'll go, I want this, this, and this. Yeah. And to placate them, you go, yeah, okay. And then 20 minutes later, you know, it's, it's a nuclear war. So we're, we're really, yeah, it's true though, but we're really just careful with our choices. So we're really transparent in, in all of the food. So, uh, what are you doing? We've so much to So the place, it's it's attached to the Centre Coast Marine Discovery Centre. So, can I start with a question? Before? Yes, yeah, yeah. When did you move up to the Centre Coast? Uh, we've been ago? here, I say six years, but it feels like it's been six years. For a while, <laughs> like it's yeah. Okay. What brought you here? Um, what brought us here? We bought a beautiful house in Avoca <laughs> and couldn't afford it. Um, we had an idea to turn it into this sustainable bed and breakfast with staff. Um, so it was six bedrooms, three floors. Mm. We spent everything we had on it, mm -hmm. and then. Um, the doctor said to Nikki, if you're going to have a baby, now's the time. Ooh. And we were like, okay, we've got these awesome plans. No. <laughs> Never really planned on yeah. having kids, you know. Yeah. Um, and we were like, okay, so we had the kids. Yeah. And now I would... You know, never change it, it's yeah. awesome. Yeah. They drive me crazy, but I love them and would yeah. never change. But what that meant was that kind of that would never work. Yeah. Um, so we sold up okay. and um, we were like, what are we gonna do? How do we get into a business that look hospitality is tough, it's a it's a very tough game, the margins are tiny, yeah. more people fail than succeed, and I was like, how do we create a business model that sells something that you don't have to hold in the fridge or so what we worked out that we sell information yeah. so I've opened uh, probably on the coast maybe six or seven um, statewide maybe 25 restaurants cafes bars but for other people <laughs> yeah so they'll give me they'll give me a brief and they'll say um, I love to see it's so busy, I love it. It is. <laughs> and by the way, we're just really interesting so many deaths. Yeah, well, today's Tuesday, so today's Dilf Tuesday. Okay. Yes, yeah. So these, doing it on a Tuesday. <laughs> these guys have now 3,000 members wow. countrywide. So this is, this is a great initiative, and this is a little bit about the parks kind of um, encourage these groups to come in, but yeah. they've also supported and, and flourished, and, and they, these guys. Uh, essentially either fly in, fly out, professional dads that have made that choice to stay at home. Oh, but the what's, it, what's that what they call? Dads I'd like to um, friend. <coughs> the milfs. Yeah, like the milfs. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, cool. so the, the great thing about these guys is that they're really quite open. You know, they're, yeah. they're regular Aussie guys, but they're talking openly about mental health, yeah. Yeah. openly yeah. about the, the challenges that face dads. And you know, my, my kids are seven and four, and I remember rocking in a chair and just going, "I'm going to lose my, I'm going to lose my mind." The kids are spinning like cartoons around me. <laughs> And mums go through that. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think that mums have that net support network. Yeah. They have the mums groups. Yeah, they have. We talk more and, we can make more guy, and guys men, don't, don't talk more. Yeah. They're like, "How's everything?" Yeah, great. Yeah. <laughs> I'm holding together. Surviving. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's but it's not sometimes. Yeah. And these guys are, they'll come and say, "Oh, we had a terrible time." It was, and they're, they're openly sharing. So, Luke has put together groups all over the country now. Wow. Which is, so, you know, Mondays is kids yoga, Tuesdays is DILFs, we've got a reading crew, we've got a, um, oh, today we've got a writing um, uh, party as well. Hey, Bart, hi. Hi. 
<laughs> yeah, park life writers. Yeah. yeah. So um, this is where you can you can explore your inner author and. Um, oh yeah, I saw it up there. Like you have all these yeah. different initiatives. Yeah. And what other you got music as well? Yeah, music all the time. So uh, I'm a I'm a old nerdy DJ. So I love music and the, the food is as important as the coffee. Is as important as the music. So everything's everything's curated and thought about. Yeah. And so we'll have um, musicians every week. We'll have DJs. And then we have like a nerdy listening party once a month as well, <laughs> which is just ridiculous. <laughs> so uh, what's that? Tell me oh, so, about that. Well, a friend of mine had the World Bar in, in King's Cross and he, yeah. introduced, oh, me, he <laughs> yeah. introduced me to this uh, classic album Sundays where they choose something and they'd say, this is important, you should listen to it. So what they would do is I'll sit in silence, listen to a heavyweight version in like heavyweight vinyl properly, like how it was, wow. so the whole thing, and then they'd sit have a couple of drinks and talk about it and I was like wow yeah. so we just it's like a book club it's like a book club uh, for yeah. music yeah so we'll we'll play like an album from end to end um, but you really have to listen to that music that's right pretty much the whole thing no but that's right that's right but you'll find that we'll set up a big sound system here and some people will tune in some won't and I like that but you'll see people just <laughs> kind of just go so we're, I think we're playing <laughs> We're playing one of the Kraftwerk albums on the first Saturday of the month, this month, and then it's all sorts of stuff. Oh, Michael Jackson, one of his early albums. How long are the albums? Oh, uh, it depends. Depends. Are uh, they about an hour? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then we have a you know a DJ afterwards. But it's cool. Like. Yeah. And this is all from. Yeah. Well, there wasn't anything. There was there was a window. Um, but, you know, like, yeah, it all started with, there was a window, there was a window, window right? was a I broom cupboard. So we put a full commercial kitchen in there. Yeah. Um, but I don't know, like, I, I'm middle 40s now, and I, I don't feel like I've got to prove myself in the culinary world. Like, I've done it. We, I've worked in all, everywhere I want to. I don't, I don't feel like I have to. So I want to do this because I want to. And sometimes it's unnecessary. So we, we've got a little trike. And on the trike, we've fitted an Esky. So the Esky we'll drive around yeah. and it's got a sound system on the trike <laughs> which is unnecessary but I want to do it yeah. and the trike the trike has a bubble machine attached yeah. to it which again is unnecessary but the kids love it yeah. Oh, oh, they win. Win. Yeah. <laughs> and when we set the bubble machine up here <laughs> it's actually it's, it's actually quite an interesting phenomenon because my, my wife she, she um, is an accountant so she's very smart and she'll say to me you've spent seven dollars a week on these bubbles is it necessary and I said, just watch this. So the bubbles go on, the kids run. When the kids run, the mums come. And when the mums come, the mums buy coffee. And I was like, there's your seven dollars. Super amazing, magical advertisement. But just by accident. But it all yeah. works for everyone. But by accident. So I was just like, I like bubbles. Bubbles are awesome. You're like a big kid. Yeah, you're a big huge kid. kid. Yeah. A huge child. We, we flavoured the bubbles as well. So we flavoured the bubbles with vanilla. For smell. Yeah, yeah. yeah so it's the like kids would pop them and it'd be like, wow. wow. <laughs> and again, totally unnecessary. But it's those kind of little things that I think make. Do you know what I mean? Now they're cleaning the garden. Yeah, and the cat. There's the a whole, little boy with a rag. Yeah. <laughs> I'll set up the camera. It's a safe place. It is. Yeah. It's totally enclosed. And we, we were instrumental in the fact that uh, it has to be safe. Yeah. Um, that's right. Yeah. That's right. So we, we put in gates. Um, we also made sure that there was fresh water available and sunscreen available. So we got the council council involved. Yeah. We're working with council to get more sh more shade. Excuse me. Yeah. You have a massive place. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It's beautiful. You don't see it, but it's a yeah. you also with the Yes. Yeah. yeah. I think that's the only way. Yeah. You know. And. The great thing is, is that while our building is a trust and it's privately owned, this is yeah. this is public land. So people will come and go, and on a Sunday we'll have six parties. So we'll also have six parties and me on the trike selling kombucha <laughs> with a bubble machine. Smelling like vanilla. Yeah, smash, smashing out the tunes. But what? Yeah. But what? What mums wanted, and I found, I spent three or four weeks just sitting here and going, is this a good idea? Yeah. So mums generally come in, I'll, I'll paint the picture for you. So they, they have two kids generally, one school age kid, one child that's usually been still being breastfed. So they'll come in, they'll have all their stuff, because mums are very organised, not, not like dads. And they'll sit, and there'll be a group of them, 
and they don't want to move, and neither should they move. So I'll, I'll walk up to them and say, guys, can we get you a coffee? And we've got a mobile Xbox machine on the arm. That's that is like um, So we'll, we'll deliver it, and then their eyes, <laughs> they'll just go, what? I don't have to, you know? So yes. <laughs> We, we're training them to they'll come and usually the first six weeks they came and they brought coffee from Macca's and it's like listen girls I'll, I'll, I'll buy you a coffee but don't, don't buy it from Macca's, you know, <laughs> because it's not that's not good for anyone um, so now the girls will come and they'll just go like this and wave and we'll be, be over but why not and why not have food that is clean and pretty and just because it's in a park doesn't mean to say it's got to be bad you know, because it can be, we could very, very easily just put a pie machine in it and just not worry about it. But we're not, you know, we're making everything every day and it's just with some thought, you know. So you introduced, you bring your Yeah, I guess, I guess so. My, my mum said to me when I was pretty young and we did some big things in food when I was very early um, and travelled a lot. Um, she said to me, why don't you put all of the things that you love together? And I was like, that would never work. It would never work because I DJ and everything, produced music and it's like, that, they're two different worlds. But here, we can play the stuff that I want. So it's my playlist, it's nobody else's. So the girls have a very, it's like, it's either that one or that one. And we have other restaurants curating playlists for us. So Tropicana Pizza will say, we've been at the park, we love it. You guys should listen to this stuff. So they're like, they're, they're much hipper than me. And they have a cool playlist, you know? And I'm like, well, that's great. That joins everyone together. Um, and I can go into my kitchen and I can just make whatever I want. With the music flowing. Yeah. That's right. That's what yeah. I love that. Because yeah. when you like, vibe with music, it just brings up love. Yeah, it does. And there's no better place. We put the, um, the roller door up and I can, we have a blackboard menu. We just paint it. So today it's blank because I wanted to change it. So I'm like, what is it today? And this is, but look, I've been on the Central Coast six, six or seven years, yeah. and we're not sure. But when I arrived from Sydney food, yeah. there was no communication. Mm. No one was talking, no one was sharing. Yeah. Um, chefs were writing menus. They were writing the menu first and then trying to source the ingredient. And I was like, okay, so shouldn't we find the ingredients and then write the menu? I don't know. And uh, I transferred from Ride to Wyong Tef. Skill levels were very different. Yeah. Whereas the kids at Ride were uh, industry focused, you go. and mm. it was a different demographic, yeah. you know, um, yes. and it's, yeah. it's changing, but the, the food just still needs to to evolve. So we, we did we did going back, we did a fair amount. So Julie Goodwin and I started the Central Coast Food Network. Oh, yeah. So that was we're sitting in. Um, an amazing place, part of the world, unbelievable, You're right on the ocean, surrounded by farms. Yeah. But we're buying ingredients from Sydney Mac, and I was like, hang on. <laughs> so we, we went and knocked on farmers' doors and said, can we come and use your produce? Yeah, yeah, you know. So we, we talked about this whole, how do we build this network of chefs, producers, um, providors. So we got to a stage with that where uh, we had, you know, Melora Farms, oranges, avocados, we had um, Champion Organics. And I was in this amazing position where, like, if you, so let me tell you about Champion Organics. So he's sending his organic weeds and organic greens to Kylie Kwong, Monte Kaludrovics, so, um, bathers, sorry, not bathers, uh, icebergs, you know, and they're going straight past me on the freeway. <laughs> and so, like, hey. so if I wanted to get them, and I had, we opened a couple of places here. We would have to send someone to Sydney to get them. And I was like, so this place is 40 minutes from here. And this is all wrong. So I went, you know, made friends with Michael and his wife, and he would say, here's a pair of scissors, help yourself. And for a chef, just to get it fresh. Straight from the. Wow. Blew my mind. So this is why we introduced the, the little kitchen garden here. So with this, we want the kids to be involved. So they'll come, they'll plant something, you know, they'll pick it, they can do with it, they can water it, they can do whatever they want, you know. I, I want them to smell it yeah. and to just understand what it all is. Because there's that massive disconnect. Yeah, seeing that whole circle that I plant the seed and. A little bit later, I can actually eat something. Yeah. 
Yes. And there's a massive movement. Look, in in the next couple of years, this the food will change completely. This is completely. Yeah. Um, but this is just a tiny little bit that we can do. Yeah. Um, oh wow. Yeah. yeah. And but especially I, for the kids, I mean, they start when they come here more often. They right. start like even if they just come once a week. Yeah. How they start off. But I mean, like that, that wow. the whole thing. Like I'll come on in the morning, I'll water the plants, and I'm like, right. Oh, we got half the zucchini flowers. That's sweet. They go on the menu. Yeah. That's how it should be. Yeah. It shouldn't be. We have zucchini flowers on the menu, and then you order them, Maybe and they come from the city, <laughs> and then you go, oh, we can't get them, they're for sixty dollars a box. Yeah. But like the, the, from, from a um, like a culinary point of view and a, and a um, fiscal point of view, they're free. Yes. So I know that the margins are this big. If my vegetables are free, what am I, what am I doing? Yeah. Yeah. Fresh. And you see, like if we we've got a. Um, just taken off this Korean salmon uh, noodle bowl. Yeah. So when somebody orders them, I'll go into the garden and we'll snip the mint, we'll snip the coriander leaves, you know, we'll snip the edible flowers. And mum's going, what's she doing? What's she doing? Is that for me? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Well, you do that for everyone. I'm like, yeah. Well, why, would, why wouldn't you? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's just yeah. like, and um, I don't know. I think if um, I try to make every every dish that is just spectacular. I just want to make it spectacular. Well, I'll you know? with your meringues. So oh, that was a lot of fun. I first <laughs> <laughs> the way you did your meringues was beautiful. Yeah. Like, a lot, you just looked and went, I can't eat that. Do you know what I like? <laughs> you know what I like? Is when you give somebody something and they go... Yeah. <laughs> Wow! Like, and again, it's, it's like that, is it really necessary? We could do those fat meringues without those beautiful baby lemon balms, without the edible flowers, but you know what? It makes that little extra. And also just taking the herbs as well, for like the meal afterwards, mm. it might even activate that desire to start the meal at home. Sure. I mean, you, what you do in here is like, besides planting real things, you are planting Maybe, wow. yeah. Um, I usually don't think that far ahead. <laughs> but <laughs> no, but that's amazing. Yeah. It's, it's it is. Yeah. It's like, well, this is more for taste. taste. So you're creating yeah. like the people are Yeah. You're starting with something that you Yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe. But I, I can't think of anywhere I'd like to to work more. Every day, like, oh, wow. this place is seven minutes from my house. <laughs> and after wow. years of driving to Sydney, yeah. and, you know, it's, no one's in a hurry, you know, the girls that we work with are just beautiful and they all want to learn and we, there's, there's so much we've, we've got planned, like, I'm not very good, I'm not very good at sitting still, I've got this <laughs> list of a hundred things and occasionally we'll just go, okay, we're doing that. I don't yeah. know if I'm, I'm, I'm an ideas man. Well, an ideas, but yeah. then you... But how do you put it into, yeah, how do you put it into text? How did you, like, you said you had this idea here, yeah. and there's this window. So oh. how did it um, I am a terrible planner, also. Yeah. So I, <laughs> I don't know. So it I just out. find that you just do it. Well, and you work. What was the next one? Yeah, did you approach the one? Yes, we approached, we approached John Asquith um, and said to him, Run, Alex. You have a space. Run. Yeah. Can I help you commercialize it? Beautiful, okay. So, yeah. uh, from his point of view, um, the Marine Discovery Center, it's awesome, oh, it but it's, it, it was getting a little dated. Mm -hmm. So what I didn't know was that they'd just won a grant for two million bucks. So they're gonna have a full upgrade. Now, wow. with that full upgrade comes um, an extension for me, a full revamp, wow. and they're these guys are ex-engineers, so we've got... <laughs> these are the cleverest guys, you know, all in their 60s and 70s, all volunteers. Wow. But so they'll, I'll say, we need a... Um, oh, we need a stainless steel corner bench fitting, no problem, Paul. So we've got a great relationship where we help get people into there, and they feed us, and they're wonderful. And it's a beautiful collaboration, as I said, let's like, commercialize that. Therefore, you bring more people yeah, into yeah. that space as well. But with rules, and we, we set the rules ourselves. So okay. we said uh, it has to be um, educational, 
Yeah. It has to be sustainable and it has to be environmentally friendly. Yeah. It has to be accessible for kids. Yeah. So what what I always tell businesses when I start, I said, have a one pager or have a one liner. Yeah. Who are you? What do you what do you stand for? So yeah. everything we um, do, we make a fit like a, a conscious choice of well. Does it fit with these these this guideline, this mantra that we've created? So we don't use plastic. Everything we use is completely uh, compostable, recyclable. Uh, we don't use uh, anything that's pros like highly processed. So we only use brown flowers, raw sugars, um, and it's important for people that have allergies to be able to. Do you know what I'm saying? So inviting. Well, the guy, exactly. The guys come up and say. Is that banana bread gluten free? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? <laughs> because everyone yeah. uses the same. Like, you get sucked into this trap as a chef. Yeah. It's easy to ring up the particular supplier and get the same banana bread. Yeah. It's consistent, it's delivered to your door. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to think about it. Yeah. But you know what? It's just no skill. And it's laziness. It's and you're true. not really looking after yeah. the environment and yeah. yeah. But I, I think that um, you should, if, if you're able to do something, you should do it. Yeah. You know, and I, if I can't make banana bread, I'm like, I'm in a lot of trouble, right? If I can't make biscuits, I'm, I'm in the wrong business. And it's interesting because you said earlier you were terrible in planning, but play it out to be your strength because you just go into the garden and see what's in season, what yeah. can I cook today? If you would have planned, it would True. have conflicted with your plan. Maybe. But because you keep that openness to what's coming up. Yeah. Yeah. And another thing about exactly. Yeah. So we, we, we look after lots of stuff on the coast. We look after a couple of private houses as a, as a, as a, as a private chef. We, um, we look after um, a couple of real big businesses. So we spent last week in, high, in, in Melbourne for Heinz, a good fielder. So, like, really different worlds. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So for me, that's great. And that helps to pay the bills. But this. Um, is for, it's for me really, and it, I'm sure that's how we make some money. Otherwise, I'm, I'd be an idiot. <laughs> when did you start? That? It's been a year old now. A year old. Yeah. Wow. yeah. But it's gone from a window <laughs> uh, with nothing Just, yeah, yeah. and a toaster press to yeah. we we can run we run everything from this, you know. So yeah. that um, it's it's really well put together. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the food, or was that that you put together, like the food collaboration thing? Oh, the Food Network. Yeah, exactly. sure. So when did you start that one? That was well. I helped Julie Good. I was Julie Goodwin's resident chef for I'm gonna say 18 months. Oh, wow. uh, in, her in her cookery school. Yeah. So she came to see me and she said, um, "Would you be interested?" And I was like, "Yeah, I love I love that, that the teaching element. I yeah. think it's really cool. Yeah. Um, and I just like." If it's got any, anything to do with food, I'll do it, you know. Yeah. Um, but I'm 40 something now, and I, I'm still young. Yeah, but I'm not. <laughs> you know, I, no, I got, I got, I was 36, and I went out for a beer with a guy who was 46, yeah. and I looked at him and I was like, oh, "You're me in 10 years, and you're still doing the same thing. I don't oh, want to do okay. that." So I remember going and opening an oven and not being able to get up and thinking, "I don't, I don't want to miss." Another birthday, I don't want to miss Christmas. It's unrealistic to ask people to work 12 hours without without a break, without a meal break, without a... It's a rough gig, you know, and you know, it's not terribly well paid. And the people that do really well are awesome, but it's 3%. Yeah. Like, yeah. But I don't know anything else. I can't change a plug, I can't put wallpaper on. So I don't have those skills. So this is it. Yeah. We're setting up different organisations around you, like food networking groups, yeah. like William, Berger, yeah. Walter, yeah. Speaker, yeah. Uh, Train. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. it is, I just, I just haven't worked out how I, I just haven't worked out what it is. But that's Still okay. Life, that's goal. okay. I think you get to a point where you go, well, that's all right. Yeah. I don't. And you know what? We've had um, some spectacular failures. We've spent a lot of money on stuff that just didn't work. <laughs> that's how you learn, and you go. But that, that, that exactly. Yeah. Once you get your head around, and I think that comes with age. Yeah. So you get your head around the fact yeah. that it doesn't actually. As long as I didn't die when it was happening. Mm -hmm. True. Like I've been in some situations. Okay, what's the worst? Yeah, oh. what is? I'm trying to think. Quite Maybe even. one of the worst. Well, recently. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so 
I flew to Melbourne last week for Heinz, and great, great gig, but intense. So big, big corporate industry, um, and the, again a disconnect to kind of like the, the, to, to logistics and food. So they're like, okay, so we've got um, I don't know two and a half thousand people coming through this show. We need you to show them a little tiny burger with Heinz products. We need to show them a little milkshake. Um, in Melbourne. Yeah. So you know I live in Sydney. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so can you do it? I was like, yeah, of course I can do it. And that's, that's another one of my problems is I just say yes. <laughs> and that's then a good and then work and then it, solve out. it out. Later. Yeah, exactly. then work it out. And I was like Take the lead. you know, I, I now truly believe in my skill and I and it's this is what it costs guys and um, and they go, yep, no problem, they don't care. Um, so anyway, I'm in Melbourne, landed at 5 p.m. Uh, with nothing. So bearing in mind that at 7 in the next morning, I have to feed <laughs> two and a half thousand people. I have nothing. Nice. I have an Uber account, huh? Yeah. So I'm in an Uber, flying around, knocking on people's doors, ringing old friends. How do you, can you help me do this? In Woolies at midnight, you know, six trips to my apartment with the little trolley that I had to steal. <laughs> because they wouldn't let, wouldn't let me have it. The Woolworths Metro, they wouldn't let me take it, so I had to steal it. So, and you know what? The next day, we did 22 um, people, 17 times. So it's 20 minutes on, 20 minutes off, 20 minutes on, 20 minutes off. You're on live. On live, in front of them. So everyone else had a team, there was me. And I just, at the end of it, I kind of had my head, hand on the wall, and I was just like, <laughs> and yeah, like stuff, stuff really, it, I've never been beaten, I've never been beaten, I've been in some really sticky situations. Yeah, but you can problem solve, so you're but you just, and you know it's me, no, yeah. that's what I'm getting. I think that's like, come you know with time though, you. but yeah. chefs are like, um, like the chefs that I work with, they've become my family, yeah. you know, and my brothers and my sisters, and honestly, yeah. you can yeah. ring them in the dead of night, and you'll say, I need you, I'm in the weeds. You need to help me. And they're like, what do you need? So I rang Katrina, who was a friend of mine, who had helped me a thousand times on the Fat Morang truck. I'm like, I'm in trouble. I've forgotten something. She's like, I'll be right there. So she's in Melbourne and I said, where am I going to find the, all this stuff? She's like, okay, speak, speak to these guys, speak to these guys. I'll introduce you to this guy. And it just works out, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm not assuming that you know everything. I don't. Exactly. No. I never. I don't think I have. No. No, we won't. Yeah. But that's that's good as well because once you realise that you can't. Yeah. You just got to find the people that can. Yeah. And if, if they call you, you will always help as well. Oh, for so sure. It's, it's, yeah, yeah. We had a huge list of questions and we probably haven't answered them. It's okay. Well, it's okay. <laughs> We're just following with what's coming up. That's good. Yeah. So, so I don't think there's any worse. I've been in some situations that I didn't want to be in. Yeah. Uh, and only once or twice I've just wrapped my knives up and gone. It's got for me. Yeah. It's been bad for you to do that. It feels like you can pressure, like, because you must be able to deal with pressure pretty well. Because yeah. Chef, I like you it. You give a chef. You like it, yeah. Pressure. Yeah, look, I remember we had to do, we lived in uh, a country, Austria, I'm going to say. Yeah. And we had to do a stand up talk on who we were. <laughs> and I, I couldn't, I couldn't deal with it. I couldn't yeah. think about how on earth I was going to stand in front of people and, and, and speak. So I dried up, completely clammed up. You wouldn't believe it now. No. <laughs> I couldn't, I was sweating, dry mouth. And as I got older and I started to teach, we had to introduce a similar situation to the students. And the students did the same thing. I was like, what was it? And I worked out that the adrenaline that you feel can affect you two ways. You can either give into it and just fall apart or use it. So we used to say, that's energy. If you can harness that energy, you can do anything. So I still get that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Am I going to get out of this alive? Yeah. But I now know that, that is, that's the energy that I need. So I, I'll walk up. I did a... A stand-up talk. Uh, I looked after Guzman and Gomez, their food for uh, nine months. That was wild. So I stood up in front of a hundred, like a um, hundred um, franchisees, <coughs> countrywide. We had a live link up to LA, um, and I had to sell me. 
So I remember yeah. it's had 30 minutes to sell me. Why was I the guy that could take DYG forward with food? Uh, look at me. I'm the least Mexican guy in the world. I'm the whitest man alive. Right? So I had to sell. And I, and I, I basically, the first minute I was... <coughs> And then I felt this kind of energy and I was like, this, <laughs> boom. <clears throat> so you can see, like we've recorded it in that first minute, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. and the CEO said to me, I thought you were going to lose it. Yeah, yeah, you're like, <laughs> and then you just went, you had like a little in your eye and you flipped it. Like, um, I completely forgot where I was going with that. But, um, yeah. It was, I think you were talking about students when you were... That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so I, talk, I said to them, harness that energy. And that's what I do. Like I know that um, now when I walk into a room, I feel like I know I know what I'm talking about. Right? I didn't know what I was talking about with GYG because it's fast food. I, I learned very very quickly. But I know now that if I could, if I need to walk into a room, um, one they've asked me to be there. Yeah. Two, I'm the expert on the subject without being like. Do you know what I mean? I'm not trying to say, oh, hey, I'm an expert, but I know I know food. Yeah. That's all I know. So that's fine. Yeah. It's, it's, as I said, we've got spring deep, spring heart. When's, when's yeah. your passion yeah. and your purpose like yeah. and like I've ended down here? Yeah. It just comes so natural. Yeah. You can speak days, hours. Mm -hmm. My yeah. dad always says, under pressure, that's where I'm going to yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's good. When you get that energy here, yeah. it's just like, whoa. Yeah. Yeah. But I just look at this place, you know, and I think of the, the massive potential where we're on the waterfront. Yeah. So if you look at this, like, so I'm, I'm also thinking from a business point of view, if I look at business models close by that are paying an awful lot of rent, uh, we're on the water, we're surrounded by development, we're building, all uh, oh, the skate park's gone in, we're building a walkway around the, um, uh, around the waterfront, so you'll be able to walk from Terrigal Beach to here, the parking's free, and I'm going, oh, don't have a minute, you know, so this is another reason, like when I have these moments of kind of lucid thought is that I would be mad not to do this. And you've got to you have a business mind, yeah. too. You've got, through your passion, you've still got to have a business mind. And well, you have an yeah. at home, so. She keeps me very... You know, <laughs> yeah. And we, we, we folded businesses because... Beautiful. Like Fat Lorang was awesome. Yeah. And it was doing very well. We were getting, yeah. we were getting lots of press. Uh, the product was great. The um, margins were great. Yeah. But I could only work one day a week. Yeah. 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 It could only be in one place. Though. And it all revolved around me. Yeah. So when we put some somebody else into it, it didn't work. And I was like, hold on a minute. So that's okay, I see, that's me. So that that's my next challenge, I think, is that while I'm surrounded by terrific staff, yeah. you have to find those people that have the same passion yeah. to do those unnecessary things to make with the bubble machine and the yeah. water, yeah. Exactly. But they need to have that same energy yeah. 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 within them. Yeah. 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 But for me, it's not driven by money because no. it, it hasn't. The money, my mum used to say, the money will come, and it does. You know, don't worry about it too much. So we were very positive, um, and it's all about uh, the, just that little thing. So I see a mum, you know, like we, like. Everyone gets help down with their buggies. Everyone gets personal service and will walk around and make sure, do you need a second coffee? Do you need a water? You know, what do you need? So we'll give them on a daily basis, like um, like free ice blocks when it gets hot and frozen oranges and that kind of stuff that isn't, it isn't necessary. And, and, and on a business point of view, point of view it's, it's not very clever. I think it is because I, if I go out to a place, a restaurant that's mm. unique mm. and has that personal touch, that we mm. Yeah. Because you're caring. Yeah. That's what you're caring yeah. for. You're caring for your, for your yeah. clients, yeah. for your, for your like, yeah. colleagues, for people. You yeah. really care for people. Yeah. And I think that the, like, we've, we've, we've witnessed the power of the mum here. Yeah. So they, they will, when they think it's right, they'll just like, right. You're, you're the favourite. I'm telling everyone. Yeah. And it's like wildfire. Yeah. 
So, you know, I think it's important. And you yeah. take yourself, I mean, you bring in your personality with your music and your bubbles, but you also listen to the mouth. So it's a really nice yeah. combination. So you it, know your clients and you know yourself. It's certainly a unique place. It is. So they get introduced to you, music. Yeah. <laughs> and it sounds like you keep continuing evolving your vision. You're not like you're not a person who would say, this is how it will be for the next time. No, years. I don't think Maybe so. Maybe not even 10 no. months. No. Because things will just evolve. Yeah. It's yeah. just so beautiful. And it is, the, you know, the, the whole place will extend within um, six months, so the capacity so will double. Happen, yep. Wow. And we'll enclose the whole place. The wind is coming. Yeah. You know, we're oh, yeah. we're outside. Um, yeah. So we'll make it more of a destination place where you're coming. You can have lunch. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's a wild ride. Yeah. And yeah. honestly, sometimes we don't have time to stop. But I, I'll walk <laughs> around. Fun, though. Don't oh, you it's fun. Yes. It's such like an impact bus. on the central coast, yeah. which you really like. Yeah. Right? What I say. I love it. It's like I love it. It's a home for moms and dads. Yeah. It's yeah. wow. Yeah. It's, wow. A, it's, a, it's a terrific place to live. We we um, moved from Sydney. We, we kind of drew a circle. I remember we lived in <laughs> we lived in Wollamaloo. Yeah. Yeah, we, and we, drew, we couldn't afford it, obviously. <laughs> yeah. And we drew a circle, like, right, how far can I drive to work? So we, we drew it, and it, Avoca Beach just ripped in. And we came here, and we were like, this is awesome. And I can't think of a better, safer, cleaner, a happier place. What does it mean to you today? Oh, it's, be, it's certainly become home now. Um, I, I really enjoy the, the way we could walk to the beach. And there's such a great community atmosphere. You know, like in, I've been spending a lot of time in Sydney, and um, I'll talk to anyone. And my kids won't talk to anyone. You see my little boy Harry, he'll wander around the park. Hello, how are you? I'm Harry, this is my park. <laughs> He's watching you, see, that's how I know, I know, and they don't they just do that? Um, so, but here we can really do that, and the, the people that have come here become friends, and they've said, you know what would be great, why don't we do a painting class and things, trees? I'm like, oh, relax, why don't you do a kids yoga class? Why don't we do, right behind us is the, is the, um, book, the book writing class, you know? And what a place to do it. Yeah. And it's not it's not because I'm trying to sell more coffee. No, no. That's that's You're the, op that's the opposite of that. That's great. No and, and great if it um, if it makes some money for the business, terrific. But I would love somewhere to come where my kids could go and paint a rock and hide it. Or they could, you know, they could just do stuff that's wholesome and and well meant yeah. and you know we're so, we're, the world's so full of negative emotion and power that if you can come and have a like a cool little spot and then you see some guy on a unis unicycle like, <laughs> so, yeah, 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 yeah. well look we've got circus skills coming in we've got yeah we've got an animal um animal trainers coming in we've got um the guys from the conservatorium coming in so i wanted kids to see uh, what a trombone looked like. I wanted them to see what a raccoon, not a raccoon, what do they call those animals that you have here? Like a raccoon. That's it. I'm like, which one? Yeah, we have them at home. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it's yeah. important, I think, for kids to, to be um, open and exposed and to stuff. And connect what you said at the beginning that in Sydney, everybody's just so disconnected to everything. Yeah. And they are in communities. Like they don't yeah. even have communities yeah. in Sydney. Sorry, I, that's what I, that was my experience when I'm here, like yeah. right there. When I said hi to someone who it's was like, like oh. yeah. uh, do you want to steal my handbag? That's uh, right. Do I look yeah, like it? Yeah, yeah. Um, no, but here, so like I said, it's yeah. so open. And it's what I really, really love that you are, you're not coming in and preaching, don't do that, don't do that. You're just doing, you, you are just the change that you want to see. You yeah, were that's, sitting that's, here that's and good. saying, I want to have coffee. Okay, let me do it. Yeah. Look, and then uh, you share it. Like the park is full of my friends. These are, these are friends, you know. And they, and not not only have the people that come here become my friends. My friends have now come here because they like it. It's it's great. It's safe. It's, it's you. It's you know. I don't have to come to see me. But. It's a place for your food. It's creation. Yeah. Life's creation. Everything's creation. Yeah, I think so. And it's it's I I, I really really believe in. Why not? Yeah. Why not? Wow. So, you know, wow. when they built the skate park, I was like, how could we capture these guys? Kids, are, it's a different demographic, you know, they're 10, 
so I don't know, maybe 8 to 15, they don't care about the fact that we've got cold fresh juice and kombucha. Why <laughs> not? <laughs> they're, 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 what they want is someone to connect with them. So we'll drive over on the track, we'll have some music blaring. Oh wow. And we'll be like, guys, sunscreen, water, and they're like, you know, like they look at me like, what do you want, mister? And I'm like, I don't want anything, mate. Just help yourself, you know. Yeah. So it's just about what I would love as a, as a parent now. Yeah. But as a kid, like, it's just like you see me <coughs> look like a bear on a unicycle when I'm on my. <laughs> and it's funny, and I'm like, that's funny. It's good to get a laugh. Well, it is. We, we, we had a moment where um, <coughs> there was a guy, bless him. And I've had a food truck for a, a fair amount of time. He was selling ice cream outside. And I was like, okay, the, yeah, I knocked on the door. I was like, dude, this is, that's not cool. You can't do, well, I know you can't do that, but that's not really that fair, is it? You know, I mean, I'm selling gelato and ice cream. You, you can move around that can. He was like, oh, yeah, fair enough. Anyway, the next day I came, I go on my trike. And then he parks, and I'm like, oi! So I'm, I'm chasing him on the trike. <laughs> And I'm like, in my head I can see this middle-aged, overweight man. He wants ice cream! He's fast! He must be really hungry! But I just like, like, you know, I think that's hilarious. And I'm, ha I'm, like, I'm happy to make a fool of myself. You know, like... Oh, I'll, yeah, I, I will. I'll chase them away. But I'll, I'll, I'll ride around, I'll, I'll, ring, I'll ring the bell, and I'm happy to get off and have a talk with the kids. And I don't know, like, what... We, we've, we've only got one one shot, right? We've got one shot at it, and yeah, yeah. And if you get through it and you've had a bit of fun and like you haven't hurt anyone and you're nice to people, and that's it, right? Like, you know, what else can you do? And if they're happy. not smiling, they are just in thought. But nobody looks grumpy. No like everybody is, is just like a mom is looking at the little bugs yeah. with their kids. It's it's just. So we'll give um, we'll give the kids um, bird seed, wild bird seed for the ducks. You know, so they be started and they'll chase the ducks, we'll frighten them, and the girls will look after the ducks like they're their children. We've taken half of us into the hospital because we had accidents. So. And we've got one duck who's got one leg, Peggy, who, who've, um, yeah, she's rehabilitated to come and come back to shop up around. Um, and the kids know her, so we'll give them um, bird seed to feed them. So now they don't chase them, they feed them. And I'm like, there's one of those unnecessary things, but it's led to a really nice change. And they can feed their animals, and when I feed them, they respond. It's an amazing place, it really is. Yeah. And, I, and I think that within, it's 12 months old and wow. we're, we're still here. <laughs> yeah. And from a from a hospitality consultant's role, uh, point of view, sorry, um, that's good. Yeah. But it's true, you, are, you also know like how other businesses are doing. Sure. You have a good comparison, yeah. a good feeling, okay, am I actually doing the right thing? So you get that feedback as well. It's not just doing it out in the blue. Yeah, it just feels right. It yeah. feels right. But I like to just do stuff. So, yes, of course. Anything. What What did you have to unlearn on your journey? Um, that's really that's jumping up first. Oh, okay, so. Um, chefs are funny, guarded, private, uh, yeah, strange animals. Yeah. Yes. So, so it's not um, because you don't interact with people. Like you, you're in your kitchen, you're in your team, it's your space. Chefs are very pri private on, and they're very, um, they're very protective of their own stuff. Don't touch my stuff, you know. Um, so I've had to unlearn that. But, um, I now am very open to people. We did a um, function last week for a lamp producer in uh, in Oberon, and 15 people, six courses. But we had the kids running around the kitchen and people coming in. And 10 years ago, I would have been get out of the kitchen. But now I'm like, guys, come in. I'll show you what I'm doing. Test this. Would you like to try? And they're like. Wow, you're not like a normal chef. Oh, like, oh, oh. Yeah, well, I don't know, but I've had to unlearn that. This is mine. 
you know, um, and just to relax a little bit. Of course it is. That's what I feel. Like, you know, if I would imagine stuffy. myself, it gets in the kitchen. Okay, we have to do this. Yeah. Or come in. Just but it's massive hype. It's massive pressure. And I think that if we're honest, we're always learning. Like, like now, I've got this. I, I can feel that the blackboard's empty, and I know that from a business point of view, the bit, that everything has to be ready. But on the other hand, I'm like, ah, it's okay, man. Just like let it, it'll be fine. Um, but I, I think that was that's been uh, interesting to learn, and being uh, self-aware, I guess. Yes. And you know, like it doesn't always have to be like people tell you. Is, you know, when I started as a chef, it was this is what's going to happen. You're going to get to you get your first sous chef job, head chef, executive chef, then you'll be looking after. It. And I was like, I don't want to do that. Um, yeah. How old were you when you were going to work? Seventeen. Yeah, straight from school. Um, I got a job as a dishy in a, in a restaurant and the guy, sous chef, took his thumb off on the rotary slicer. So the head chef What's stayed. That? That's the danger zone. Yeah. 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 Oh. <laughs> you still got all your food. And you still wanted to join, to go into I it. loved it. You know what? I loved that energy. Yeah. That, that, the, um, no, no, you know, it wasn't the pace. It was the, I read, I read a piece a couple of days ago about being outside of your comfort zone. So. Yeah. My whole life is like that, so I'll do these weird, wild things that I think, I can't, I don't know how to do this. So it was talking about when you're walking, when you're in the ocean and you walk out, and then all of a sudden your feet can't touch, but your toes can touch, and you've got a tiny little grasp on it, and you think, well, that's the right place to be. So, you know, sometimes in life, well, most of the time now, I'm like that, just on the edge of... Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's what I experienced as a kid, as a 17 year old, and the, the kitchen's spinning around. But you know what we got through it at the end, and he put his arm around me and said, Good job, man, you should be a chef. And I was like, oh, Pride. <laughs> the goosebumps. Pride. Let's Go on now. Go on now. Pride and goosebumps. And, and I was like, Amazing. And I loved it. The danger and the fire, and the, it was loud and vibrant. You're coming back to that adrenaline, that energy. Yeah. That yeah. You're, you're in a place like that. Yeah. You're constantly in that. In and out. In and out of danger. Yeah. You know, and you put you. Oh, I'm still fine. Yeah, I'm okay. And let I'm me okay. jump in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's commercial kitchens for you. That yeah. is high paced restaurants. They're like that. You're on the edge. Like, you would never know as a customer, but the chefs are like. All of them, the, the adrenaline's so high. This is why there's such an issue in the yeah. industry. You know, everyone, everyone burns out. Everyone abuses stuff. Yeah. Whatever, you know. But you've just got to manage it. What's your favorite? I'm smelling the kitchen. <laughs> the bubbles, we know it's in there. Yeah. <laughs> smelling the kitchen. While I, while I think about that, um, I do get kind of transported with smells yes. and sounds. So I always remember when I, the first time I heard a particular song or smell. <laughs> Isn't it? I love it. smell. It's not a kitchen smell. Okay. Really? I was expecting. So you're talking favourite yeah. smell? Any, any smell? Yeah, I was expecting food, but this is cool. Ha Harry's hair. <laughs> oh, that is so good. So he was asleep this morning, and he's asleep, and his lips are just like that. Yeah. He's only four, yeah. and I just get him ruffle his hair, put my put my nose in his hair, and I'm just like, yeah, yeah that was. Oh God, you cool. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> But for food, I'm not sure. There's so many, you know. Combinations. Uh, what's your go-to? What would your go-to meal be? Um, um, I think we're in a in a location that offers so much. Uh, and then which there is the black hole, which is still empty.
I can't answer that. Oh, I tried, well, we sat last night and we had uh, we had like green tacos. So I'll find with the kids. Um, we tried really hard to stay away from stuff, processed stuff. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm, I'm a massive believer. Uh, you out, you out, you eat completely. Uh, you know, you eat rubbish, yeah. you end up. Yeah. So we'll eat daily what we eat. Uh, hasn't always been like that, but we'll go. So we did uh, green beef tacos and um, and a crumbed lamb cutlet, which is oh, so Australian. Oh my God! Never had one in my life. <laughs> Never had one. But we had we we had some leftovers, and um, I try and use everything. Yeah. So I was like, okay, kids. So the kids are sitting there. The Korean spices are running down their arms, and I'm like, it's nice, man. Yeah. Food to touch. Yeah, get into it, make a mess. Your kids are in there cooking. They love it. Yeah, they'll they'll help me here. Uh, they'll help me with functions. They just love to cook. Yeah. And it's good for them. Uh, we had a we used to run a series of classes called Grill the Chef in Tugra. Yeah. So this was oh, this you is, put them on the spot yeah. and they're like cook or yeah. Well, basically, <laughs> it came from when I moved from Ride Turf to Wyong Turf, yeah. and I was like, where are we? You know, yeah, I'm not teaching. I'm not teaching these kids how to cook, I'm teaching them how to get to TAFE on time. <laughs> okay, well. It's true, it was life skills. Wow. Um, and I looked at the food at that time, <clears throat> and it was, wasn't was awesome, there weren't any superstars. But I was like, as a kid, what would I want to see as a young chef? And I remember meeting some well-known chefs back in the UK and thinking, oh, these guys are awesome. So can, why can't we bring Sydney chefs to the Central Coast? So we used to run with uh, Dino, my friend from Benchmark Stainless Steel. He's got a beautiful kitchen and we'd, we'd get a chef from Sydney to do dinner for 16. So that was uh, where they were right here. And you could go in and taste and sit. But then the next day we would do Train the Chef where we were sponsored by HTN. The chef would stay overnight and then they would show students how to do something. So we had Tony Bilson come up for one of them. Or, like, immense. So Tony and Amanda have become friends of ours now. And there was a moment where they both stayed with us in our house in Avoca. And bless him, he's so old school. He spent about thousand dollars on ingredients. And he's like, so Paul, I need this uh, paddy de foie gras, which is uh, goose liver paddy. Yeah. And it was like a hundred bucks a kilo. Whoa. And I've got a moment in my head where he's feeding this paddy de foie gras to my little girl. Is he cheese just loving it? Three. And she's just like looking at this guy who she's no idea. And he's, he's, this is the seminal, this is the guy that brought proper French food to, yeah, yeah, to Australia. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just like going, trying to pinch food? myself yeah, and going, yeah, yeah. it's Tony Wilson feeding paddy de foie gras <laughs> in my house. This is never going to happen again. <laughs> Um, but that kind of introducing kids to all different foods, you know, and I'll say to them, try it. If you don't like it, it's fine. Yeah. Try it, you know, especially try the lime. And Ariel go. <laughs> and then have another bite, right? Yeah. I love it. I yeah. love it. <laughs> but I think it's important to let them try. They'll work it out in the end. But if you just give them chicken nuggets, it's all they're going to eat. Yeah. That's food. I think we've forgotten that connection to it. Now it's such an experiment. Yeah. So people don't like it, but you try That's right. And as you said earlier as well, seeing as well, like having yeah, yeah. as a kind of Well, you, you, you do lose touch. And the, the whole, you know, the whole uh, meat industry is like that. Because everything's so not what it is, you know? So you'll get like a portion pack steak in a cry bag but, with a lovely picture of a farm on it. It's not like that. I've been to some of the biggest laboratories in the country, you know, and it's not like that. It's a feedlot, it's a chainsaw, and it's a carcass. It's, it's, it's all commercialized, yeah. factory. Yeah, but, you know, so we, we, like I said, we opened a place in um, Mossman that was vegan, totally vegan. Um, and then a <coughs> place in Wombrel that was, you know, three quarters vegan. And we just put a vegan menu in Pocket in the city. And it's good. So for like a couple of months a year, we just go, right, like research and development, we're going to do it. And I love it. I love the fact that you don't really need to. No, that's it. But I love a steak. I love a, I love, I love meat, but it's not necessary. You know? And there's one more coming. I go to Germany and we went to Poland. Yeah. 
beef. Oh, beyond beef. Beyond meat. Wow. And that's literally in the meat section. I was there before looking that's for it. Stuff and then my real. dad found it. He's like, oh, let me just look for it. And he straight went to the meat section. He's like, what are you doing? Here we go. I'm like, whoa. This is it incredible. is unreal. Yeah. It is literally so unreal. So that's, that's, that. that's the way it's going. Yeah. Those guys sell out. Yeah, they like, we were We worked with them when we were developing the pocket menu. Okay, yeah. And they were just starting with a lot of the fries. Yeah. So they do this. Yeah. And, yeah. and um, I was like, how do, how do we get your, your stuff? And they were like, we can't wholesale to you. And like, <laughs> yeah, it's just so big. Yeah. Um, but oh, wow. huge. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> Oh yeah, I think so. And it's good being part of it, like with your with your cafe as well. It's just like having everything for every person. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, that's one thing it's just that nice. it is, and it's not you know? it's not exclusive. It's inclusive. Yeah. Everybody can here. Yeah. Whatever you're eating, you can come here. We can sit together again around food. Right. Yeah, because we, we, we've totally, we're, we're missing that point. We so do. Yeah. Like I'm on that diet. I'm on that diet. No, I love these kind of foods. Mm -hmm. I don't care what you're eating. That's right. It's going back yeah. to... Yeah. 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 And there's an eating community. Yeah. 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 Exactly. We're going to a like, yeah. takeaway shop. <laughs> there's nothing. There's no emotion there. No. It's, it's, good it's, that, it's that line, isn't it? You know, is, is food just fuel? Yes. Some people think it is. And, and, and I'm like, no, no, no. no. But it's not. It's how, you, how it but, makes you feel, right? And hang on. If it is just <clears> fuel, don't you want to put the, the most amazing yeah, fuel the, into this vehicle? Don't buy the cheapest fuel you can. Exactly. Don't just fill your car full of methanol. That's it. Yeah. Well, do you, don't you want to have, like, if, if I get a fruit salad, I'm just, like, on a different world. Yeah. And it's, like, so many flavors, so many colors. It's just incredible. I mean, how does that energize me? Like, wow. yeah. It does. It does. Yeah. Like what you said about the frozen oranges. It's just, like, it's so easy. Like everybody can do it at home, it's just like whoa, but you put that into your mouth. You're like, wow. The emotions that it evokes. Exactly. Yeah. Abundance and everything. Yeah. Yeah. So we I mean we look after kids' parties here, but we just make it really Yeah, yeah, but it's it's we we um we just let people choose, but it's it's more like look from the bakery you can have these things. And they th they're five really nice choices. And then frozen you can have like frozen coconut milk, you can have you know um, Everything is just clean. It's no, it's unnecessary to be overcomplicated, you know. And you know, we 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 thought when we started, are we gonna? Do people want chips. Like, are people gonna come and have hot chips here? And I was like, oh, it's horrible. Yeah. But um, we've had like three people asking for twelve months. And now I feel okay about saying, guys, we don't. But you know what we do do? You know. You might like this. So we do like a little kid snack pack for five bucks. Yeah. And it's a free range boiled egg, carrots, cucumber, gluten free crackers, banana chips and hummus. Wow. In, in like a, um, <laughs> in a, like a, a recycled egg box. Your, yeah. yeah. Oh wow. So the whole yeah. thing is just, and mums are like, wow. this is exactly what I would do. This is where I think. Yeah. 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 It's good, they see it. It's a first seed. It's really cool. It's amazing. First seed, it's a massive seed that's sprouting already. Yeah, there's, there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. So we started a program with Kingdom of School. Yeah. Um, wow. Firstly, to get students in. <laughs> to help them kind of get a knowledge of working hospitality yeah. um, and with a view to sticking that kind of food yeah, into yeah, the, yeah. you know, so it's... We're just getting visitors by the ducks. <laughs> I think we need to wrap it up. Yeah. So, one question with regards to the Central Coast, outside of this place, because I guess this is maybe your favourite show yeah. at the yeah. moment. Yeah. Uh, outside of this place, what's your favourite place on the Central Coast that everybody needs to know? Does it have to do with food? No, no. Nature, anything. Oh, wow. Look, my, uh, yeah. I think um, my, wo my world is food, unfortunately. So <laughs> it's going to have to do, it's going to have okay, something to okay, do with okay. So what I like about the Central Coast is it's changing, you know, and people are changing the way that they um, offer food. So you've got people that are progressive and thinking about why. You know, so you've got people, and even doing such things as like takeaway stuff. So you've got like, um, you know, Tropicana Pizza that are really thoughtful about how they operate. And you've got like Fisherman's Wharf, who are doing incredible stuff. You've got Young Barons, you've got the Lucky Bee, 
Yeah. They're all in white one. Like, I know. And then you've got, like, you know, and then you've got like Long Jetty. You've got the guys at the Onion. You've got the guys at Green Tangerine that are doing awesome stuff. And then all of these guys, they're, they're just setting the bar a little bit higher, and everyone's going, well, you know, we can make bread. Yeah, of course, we can. Long Lance Smith. You know, our own. So, um, why, why, why not? I love that, why not? I love that behind yeah, the scenes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Getting better and better and better. So there's, there's a big um, kind of food community now. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like fermenters, there's bakers, there's... Yeah. You look at your brewers, oh, distillers, oh, yeah. you know, you've got the guys, yeah, that's yeah. right, you know. Two breweries. Yeah, yeah. Incre the incredible the skills, six the strings, summer. and that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're very lucky and... Uh, I remember sitting in a, a meeting with um, regional development and they said, you know, what is it that the Central Coast has that, you know, if you look at uh, other areas, they're, they're focused on a particular thing, you know, so uh, is it the wine? Well, you know, we don't have a wine culture, you know, but mm -hmm. well, what is it? And I think that, that it's actually starting to um, organically grow. Mm -hmm. So we've got, you know, Dan making his own gelato, you know, three or four hundred yards away. You've got people um, just doing things properly, yeah. you know, like real good sourdoughs, real good kombuchas, real good, um, you know, we've got a secret beekeepers group. Mm -hmm. I love that. So there's, yeah. there's everything. We don't need to go any further. Yeah. Becoming very sustainable here. Within, at like local growers. At local level. My favourite place is to really dive into it. Yeah, yeah. I think Reducing that... Cabin. Yeah, well, why, why, need, why go anywhere else? You know, especially, you know, I go from the kitchen to the garden. Yeah, it's only not How could it be meters. any better? Yeah. 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 Love it. So, I think that already touched on usually our last question, which is what's your vision for the country uh, I'd like, to, uh, I'd like to do some more things. I'd, I think that this this bottle can work elsewhere. Um, I'd love to see more Clark Lives. Um, I can't actually believe we managed to get the name. I love the name. Clark Lives. <laughs> well, it's a, it was a Blur album, and, um, and uh, it's a massive, it's a massive um, festival in the UK. Okay. So that's the name. This is pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah, so every morning we'll play the Park Life theme tune here. Really? Yeah, well, there's no one here. Bell, but no, that makes sense. <laughs> just for me. Yeah. But that's what it's about. Yeah. Like, I, oh, like, all of this is just. Uh, I'm pleased that wow. everyone likes it, but it's, it's just to keep me. Wow. Yeah, it's a great album. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, I was surprised you picked up the name, but I would love to see. And that's in the pipeline, you know, working mm. with the Marine Discovery Centre. Um, do we have a terrestrial discovery centre and another yeah. park life? The model is great. Oh, that connection as yeah. well. True. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's so really also showing the central coast again. Yeah. So it's this beautiful wholesome food. Yeah. Yeah. Put community together with showing more about the central. That's beautiful. Right. Yeah, wow. It's, it's Thank amazing. you. Oh, my wow. <laughs> wow. Brilliant. Wow. Thank, Thank you. So I love much. Yeah. So grateful. Oh, I love it. Love it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I might have to go and do a little, <laughs> little, little, little bit of work. Yeah, yeah, so gonna come yeah. Like, yeah. Sure. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank girls. You so My pleasure. Much. Lovely to see you. Thank you to everybody who joined in. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Thanks, Paul. Bye. Bye. <laughs>